Hi, the ADA 2021 guidelines were just published and I want to take a minute to discuss how the guidelines come about. And then subsequently, I'm going to talk about what I think is important from the new guidelines. But first off, just in case you care to know, the guidelines are a product that's created by the Professional Practice Committee of the American Diabetes Association. And this is a committee of 16 individuals who are chosen from a variety of different areas in terms of their knowledge about diabetes. And our task is every year to go through the former set of guidelines to update them and then create the next year's guidelines. Now, the term on the committee is in general about two years so that the committee doesn't stagnate. This isn't a committee of people year in, year out who write these guidelines. It's a really dynamic group of people who challenge each other and really try to make really good guidelines. Of those 16 people, one person is designated as the chairperson, and that person works very closely with the chief medical officer of the ADA who's involved in our guideline writing as well. The way the process works is that of the 15 or so sections in the guidelines, a person is designated a section head. So I'm the section head for the device portion of the guidelines. And so that means my job is to write an evidence table, which means I need to look at all of the evidence, all of the publications that have happened in the past year, and fill in the table with what's new, and then use the new evidence to create updates to the guidelines. And then I do that along with two or three other people from the committee, and those two or three other people are people with particular interest or knowledge about devices, and then at a meeting that's held at the end of the summer, basically every little section gets to present all their data to the group as a whole, and we all go through everything and agree on what the new guidelines are going to be. Once we agree on it, and the chairperson for the group, as well as the ADA CMO agrees on it, we then have it presented to the ADA board of directors for their final approval, and then you get the guidelines. So it's a process that's very rigorous. It is pretty formal. We really go through the steps every year that try to make it as good a document as possible. And we're very careful to grade the evidence. So we give you a grade that tells you how good we think the evidence is supporting our guidelines. And so there's level A evidence, which is the highest level of evidence, level B and level C, but there's also level E, which as a clinician is very important to me because that's really what we're doing clinically, the guidance that we clinicians add to the guidelines because we may not have data on all the things that we do, but there really are some things that make clinical sense that need to be included as we guide people in the management of diabetes. So I hope that you like our 2021 guidelines. We do our best. And most of all, I want to make sure that we help our patients with diabetes do better and are more able to use the tools and treatments that we now have available. Thank you.